Hello, I'm Elias Verev uh, from Lyft. I'm not very far from my rayon, which is a Russian term for a residential area that is usually uh, separated from other regions with wide roads or uh, natural features like parks and rivers, uh, which is very small. You could walk, walk across in like 10 minutes and very densely built up because my residential area uh, has around 40 buildings, apartment buildings, uh, 10 to 25 stores high. So having this dense area is pretty interesting community-wise, but it's also interesting in, in terms of co commercial activities, because almost every building here has uh, a separate floor dedicated to commercial spaces. And there are three or four shopping centers in the area. So when I started living here, and even after two years of living in the area, I still didn't know half of the shops here in the world. And uh, that's it was frustrating because I'm a mapper, so my urge is just to map everything to help other people find, discover new shapes and amenities. And uh, but I didn't know how. Like since I'm from OpenStreetMap, I could uh, survey these shops and amenities in OpenStreetMap, uh, so people would open, for example, maps me and. Uh, find the shops it's, it's not a perfect solution because there are so many shops they will just overlap another so you won't discover anything and mapping an open street map well open street map has been around for 16 years but it goes still making a map creating a map adding new venues is very simple straightforward in open street map but keeping the map up to date that is still virtually impossible. I could make an interactive web map somewhere on the web with markers, with some discovery features, with maybe editor. That might be better, but no, because people know Mercy, people wouldn't know my website. I would somehow to make it known. And when you need to use it, you will have to not forget it. And also, uh, when you need it, it's not usually at home on the desktop. All that you will have with you is mobile phone, so you will need to open it on a phone, and it will need to be comfortable to use. So many ifs, none of the options are great. So I didn't know how to map everything, so I didn't. Until last December, when in one of the Telegram groups uh, for my area, I noticed the link to Telegram bot, which uh, was ba basically a directory of uh, shops and amenities. You, for example, click shops and then uh, clothes, and you got all the clothes shops uh, in your area. Well, not much, because the bot had very few data, uh, little data, and it was very rough, basically draft version. But when I saw it, it was like a major breakthrough for me. I suddenly understood that what I wanted could have been done. What I suddenly understood like the whole process that I need to do, like how my uh, map for an area would look, how it will be kept up to date, everything. I suddenly knew I had to make a Telegram bot. Basically, what I learned is that to make some public tool, you need to use the same medium that the public uses. If everyone in your rayon are in Telegram, 
then you make your app inside Telegram. You do not make them install anything or remember anything. It's right up there. So, a Telegram bot. It's very peculiar user interface inside. Basically, all you can do is send uh, some words, receive some words, send pictures, receive pictures, and for a Telegram bot you also can make some buttons for user to click on. And that's all. There is nothing you can drag, no markers, no JavaScript, nothing. Just sending and receiving text and images. So how do you make a map in there? Well, giving the input box, uh, the obvious thought is to make, uh, make it search for things. Like you enter pharmacy and you get a list of pharmacies. Basically, what I made was a geocoder, which is a bit funny because last year at FOSDEM I was talking about a reverse geocoder and now I built a forward one. What happens? So, we got all the keywords, we got a list of pharmacies, you click on one and you get a card for the pharmacy with all the data like open hours, phones, comments maybe. Uh, I couldn't help but stitch some map tiles together and place a marker, but most people actually do not understand maps. So, how do we work with it? Well, uh, I also add two photos. One, how the venue looks from the street, so you're not lost. And one, how it looks inside, so you show you are inside the right room. And the buttons. Uh, making a Telegram bot has made me reconsider emoji. I didn't think they were like useful. They don't, don't look serious. But when in your interface all you have is text, then emojis are a great replacement for icons. Basically, emojis are a set of icons everybody can use as in text. If you have buttons with a string, you have buttons with icon and string. That's great. Emojis are great. At this, on the street, I often uh, am asked, where is some building? Because with this dense built-up area, addressing is not obvious. We have a street split in two in different uh, regions. So, to remedy that, I took uh, a piece of uh, satellite imagery, uh, drawn addresses and uh, labels on top of it, and added it to Telegram bot. So, with just one click, you have a map of your area which you can use for navigation. And also, which is the thing I'm most proud of, I believe, is I surveyed every entrance in the area. And with my boat, now you can uh, type an address and type an apartment number. And it will not only show uh, the entrance you need to use, with its photo and location, but also it will tell you which floor you need to go on the elevator. So yeah, this is pretty great bot. It just needs one thing to function, which I didn't have, and that is data. Where do you get data in that amount? OppoSitMap had like a couple dozen subjects at the time. And there is no other source. You have to survey it by yourself. And to start, maybe you need to drop some points on the map for buildings, for entrances. And to do that, I used well, an obvious solution. One of the open source map editors, UMap, uh, namely. And in there, it seems pretty simple. You just click Add Marker. You place it on the map, you type some name, type some attributes, save, and add next marker, and so on, and so on, so on. And I got so tired of it just after a couple dozen points. Because clicking, 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 moving a mouse around, it's 
not very comfortable. And with the density of points, just everything over overlaps anything. And it's not just specific to your map. Every point editor on the web or on the desktop, like QGIS, like GeoJSON.io, they all like complex, hard to use, when you need just one simple thing. But since I was already coding, why not make another tool? So I made a GeoJSON point editor. And with that, editing points becomes fun. Just open it, uh, double-click to add a point, uh, click a button to delete it, uh, to add attributes to just use a text area where you can write in plain text, name, space, something. And you can use it to copy-paste attributes from one point to another. And basically that's all. And export it to GeoJSON. It's very fun using this simple uh, editor with great user experience. And I used it to add all buildings, all 73, I believe, entrances in my area, and around 100 uh, shops and amenities that I took photos of. That was a great start. But then, uh, you cannot get much info on shops and amenities around you without actually going out and surveying them. So the next step is surveying. Going outside. And I cannot take my amazing point editor outside. All I have on the street is my phone. And what's else on my phone? My Telegram bot. So I added, obviously, an editor to the Telegram bot. It sounds simple. Just there's a button, add new amenity. When I'm near one, I just tap it, type its name, send its location. Because in Telegram, you can send location to the bot. And I was positively uh, surprised that Android phones, Android phones determine your locations in buildings pretty accurately. It was very handy when serving uh, shopping centers. So yeah, you invent some keywords and fill the long list of uh, attributes for a menu. Starting from description, comments, open hours, links, phones, uh, its address, its uh, floor, and so on and so on. Can it accept cards? Does it have Wi-Fi? Many attributes. You cannot get it anywhere except for going uh, to the venue and just checking it. And on the phone it's pretty fun. You just tap, 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 then open a camera, make a photo, make a photo from outside, from inside, send it to the bot, click save, and the venue is already in the database. You can forget about it because it's already there. And this is very important because when you have two supposes, you basically make a photo of everything, then you have thousands of photos, and you then, then come home, and this amount of photos it weighs on you until you sit down and process it one by one. And it would be very tiring because of the sheer amount of photos, sheer amount of work. So if you can reduce two-step process to one step, do it. It is very, very important. Otherwise you get tired. And just walking around serving is fun. Just why there are so many mappers in OpenStreetMap, because mapping is fun. And processing data is not. So I surveyed 60 to 100 shops and amenities a day. Why so many? Because every day I came back and I looked at my notes done during surveying and improved all the little things that bother me when editing. For example, entering HTTPS uh, column slash slash on a phone is hard. So I can make machine do it. 
or instead of entering an address, I could just choose from a few options. So I polished every small thing, so the next day I collected values faster and faster, because never make a human do things that a machine can do. Always think how you can improve user experience, because it can take five minutes of coding, but it can slash half an hour in Surrey. In the past week, I have surveyed roughly 400 shops and amenities. And that's a lot. Uh, if I knew there were so many at the start, I'm not sure I would have started this board. But now the work is almost done. I have left roughly 100 in one of the shopping centers. And that's my plan for the next week. It will take a day, maybe two, I hope. And the bot is virtually done. And it enjoys a whooping 10 users a day. 10. Because why is that? It's public too, meant to be used by everybody in the area and guests from other regions. The issue is with marketing. Writing a bot is not enough. Uh, writing documentation, surveying the area, again, not enough, because people need to know about your software if you are making it not for a close circle of people who know each other, but for everybody. You have to market it. Right now I've published info about the bot only in a couple of Telegram groups, so roughly 300 people know about it. And I plan more. I plan to contact uh, major media in Belarus so that I get more people and maybe distributing spreading some flyers around the area. Because I need users. Because having users means more eyes. Maybe I even find some co-moderators to keep the database up to date. Because there's no uh, sense in having up to date database if people are not using it. So, FOSDEM is about open source. And with that comes the question is this thing open source? Can I install it for my built up area, like residential district? And of course, yes, you can. Okay. Everything I was talking about is open source. Uh, there is just one small thing to overcome. The bot, all the strings and all the documentation. There are lots of documentation I spent nearly a week on writing. They are all in Russian. So you either understand Russian or you work with me, like write me, uh, to maybe speed up its localization and uh, speeding up its installation. While you're serving your area, <laughs> I will be translating this. But yeah, it's open source. Open source is great. Because right now, all you need to have are an idea and time. When you have both, everything else is simple. Like all the building blocks are there. Like there was this great Telegram bot library, Iogram, thanks to authors. There was a pillow for image processing, there was SQLite, which is a great database, better than it looks. And I just had to pull these blocks together and I got my Telegram bot. That is awesome. Uh, and if you have ideas and or if you have time, help make more great things. Just code. So, to reiterate on the ideas of this talk, first and most important, when making a public tool, use the same medium as your target audience uses. When you sell, it's better to sell ice cream on a beach than at a museum. If it's everybody is in Telegram, do it in Telegram. If everybody is are in Facebook, Facebook what it is. Then don't make human 
do things that a machine can do. If you can pass part of the load from human to backend or frontend, do it. Because human uh, resources are limited. Machine power is infinite. Emoji are great for user interface. Because well, for textual interfaces, they replace icons. That's very important because after a time, people won't read your words, they will just look at icons. And coding is much less than half of the job. You also have to collect data, to write documentation, to market your software. And that will take a lot more time. But the great thing about it is it can be parallelized and, and it can be postponed. So, yeah. So, do great things and thank you for listening. I'm Ilya from Lyft. Write me if you want the same one. Goodbye.